Hi, I'm Dr. Jeff Allgaier with Discover Chiropractic. Today we're going to cover a fascinating topic, and that's how regular running impacts the health of your spine. So whether you're a regular marathon runner or someone who likes to get up and do the occasional morning jog, understanding how running affects your spine is crucial to your long-term health. So... Without delay, let's jump in. So the first thing we're gonna cover are the benefits, and there are so many benefits to running in the spine. First of all, we have to understand a little bit about the spine and how it's built. So your spine is 24 vertebrae. In between each of those vertebrae is a jelly-like disc that uh, basically is a pivot that allows these vertebrae to move and twist. It's a spacer and a shock absorber in between those bones to protect the nerve roots that are coming out. So the spine is designed for movement. Each of those joints, there are technically about seven joints between the vertebrae above and below. So one vertebrae has seven joints, seven articulations to other vertebrae in your body. Joints, and it doesn't matter whether it's a spinal joint or another joint in your body like a hip or a knee, without movement, joints degenerate 100% of the time. And so for you to have a healthy spine, you have to keep your spine moving. One of the consequences of our sedentary kind of desk work, non-moving lifestyle is just all the degeneration that can happen in the spine. And so when we engage in activities like running, this is crucial for you know, normal spinal movement, normal spinal health. The first thing we're going to talk about is the discs. So as a young kid, our discs get blood supply to keep them healthy. So we need to constantly push nutrients like fluid and chemicals and electrolytes into those discs. And we need to be able to suck out the toxins uh, from those discs as well. And that happens with blood supply as a kid. But as we get older, the blood supply to those discs dries up. Pardon me. The only thing that actually supplies these discs as an adult with nutrients is movement. It's a process called creep. And if we don't constantly move our body and squish those discs, we basically keep that toxic fluid in the discs and the discs will degenerate. It's literally, I think it's 20 minutes of inactivity is enough to start to cause dehydration in those discs. Just you can see how we, we have such common, you know, how back problems and disc degeneration is such a common thing with our lifestyle. And so running or even walking is just so crucial. Every time you take that step, you're getting movement into those discs. is very healthy for the discs of your spine. This will help your discs last longer, stay healthier. It's a big plus and uh, essential for running. So the second benefit is muscle health. And so this isn't, again, we're really, this video is kind of talking about how running affects the spine, but those muscles need movement just like the discs do. And if we do not move our body, we l basically stop fluid transport in our body and talk Toxins begin to build up in our body around the muscles. Again, your muscles, you know, you've heard the old term, if you don't use it, you, you lose it. Your muscles are designed to work. And so I'm talking about the paraspinal muscles, the muscles that surround the spine, but it could even be leg muscles, glute muscles, other big postural back muscles. When we run, we constantly contract, relax, contract, relax. And that's good for the muscle. That actually helps that muscle stay young and healthy. It pumps healthy fluid and blood supply into that muscle and it gets rid of those toxins. Again, if you, if you don't use it, you lose it. We do not want our postural muscles to become weak. They won't do their job correctly and be able to counteract all the stress that we put our spines through from sitting. So spinal health or running rather super crucial for the muscle health that surrounds the spine. And then we can talk about our posture. So again, our posture is going to be this combination of our postural muscles that we just talked about, the discs, and then the articulations, the actual joints. So for us to have normal, healthy posture, we have to be moving correctly, and running is a great way to do that. Regular running will help to strengthen our posture and keep us standing upright rather than the hunch posture that I'm super concerned about that we see all the time now. And lastly, when our spine is healthy, when it's moving correctly, when the discs are healthy, when the muscles are, are, are healthy... This helps prevent something called subluxation. And subluxation is a chiropractic term that we use to describe an unhealthy spinal joint that's either stuck or out of alignment that is altering nerve function in the body. And again, don't forget that your brain is this computer that is coordinating and running all of the 37 trillion cells inside of our body. And that nerve system, the brain has to be able to communicate correctly. And those signals travel down the spine, out those nerves that travel in between the vertebrae of the spine to all the different organs of the body. If the spine starts to decay, that can interfere, that literally pinches nerves, it can interfere with those signals that travel between the brain and the body, and that will lead to a failure in the brain's ability to coordinate proper cellular function in the body, and that can lead to disease. So whether that's heart disease or, you know, stomach issues, depression, anxiety, 
ADD and ADHD in kids, migraines, infertility, all of these things can be caused by an altered communication or subluxation in the spine that is interfering with that nerve system. So having a strong, healthy spine to prevent and protect us from all the stress that we put our body through, whether it's sitting, the chemical stress, the emotional stress that we're under that tends to affect our spinal health is going to go a long way to keeping you alive and healthy as long as possible. Right, now we want to talk about the risks as well, which there are risks to running, especially if you're someone who hasn't done it, you know, that often. I think the first thing we want to touch on is overdoing it. And I take care of a lot of runners and they're tremendous athletes and they get a lot of benefit from them, but a lot of them are really beat up. I think sometimes we don't actually realize how the stress of this constant running on our bodies can actually break us down if we don't give our body enough time to repair in between those runs. And I see that a lot with our marathon runners, especially that it can be hard on the joints of the body so it can be hard on the spine and it can be hard on things like knees ankles etc and if you have a bad knee that may not directly affect your spine but if that becomes a chronic issue and you walk abnormally that can end up affecting a, you know a shift in our posture because we're not walking correctly and so we do have to watch overdoing it i am not actually a huge fan of long distance running i think a lot of things have to be built right in an individual to be able to run long distances i'm a much bigger fan of shorter distance running and maybe doing it more frequently so that we're not overdoing it there are other things if you already have spinal issues, let's say you have a spondylolisthesis, which is a, a shifted forward vertebrae in the low back, maybe you have a herniated disc, although movement and walking and running can be useful in repairing that, if we are not careful, that can actually exacerbate this underlying health condition in the spine and make that worse. And we do not want to, the spine's got enough issues to deal with. We want to make sure that if we're trying to do something healthy, we're not taking one step forward and two steps back because we're actually doing something that's going to hurt ourselves. So we do have to watch the pre-existing conditions of the spine. We have to watch the health of our joints, especially long distance running. Okay, so let's talk about some tips. If we're going to start adding running into our kind of regimen for a healthy spine, one of the things that we can do to, to to help make sure that this is beneficial for us, that maximize the benefit and minimize the risks. Number one is going to be get a good pair of running shoes. Obviously, this makes sense. We want to make sure that if we're going out and pounding that pavement, it's a lot of where we run is either on a treadmill or a pavement. And, you know, it can be really hard on the joints of the body and having a good cushion under those feet can be good. I do think we should spend a lot of time actually out in our backyard or walking around without shoes to strengthen the, the feet. But when you are running, I do recommend a good solid pair of shoes. I think it's worth the investment of a you know a hundred hundred fifty dollar pair of running shoes, which may sound crazy, but they're going to last a long time. And you only get one body. You can replace shoes, but you can't replace knees, ankles, spines, etc. The second tip would be nutrition. If we're going to add running into our body, we want to make sure that we're also doing things nutritionally to support that, to heal from those runs, and make sure that we're getting the best out of it. And two big things that I would recommend are collagen protein. Uh, a lot of people do take protein powders. Sometimes it's a plant-based protein or the most common is a whey-based protein. I am a big fan of collagen protein. That The type of amino acids in collagen protein or collagen peptides is the type of amino acids you're going to use to, to help with the joint tissue, the collagen in, the, in your meniscus, in your knees, and, the, and the, the fibrous material in those discs. And so making sure that you're getting that nutrient or that uh, nutrients through a supplement is really crucial. The second thing would be fish oil. Getting a good healthy fat in your body. Fish oil is used in almost every cell in your entire body. It's good for your nervous system, but it's really good for things like inflammation. And if you're going out and pushing it a lot with running, your body's inflammatory levels can creep up a little bit. And so taking fish oil can not only help with some cellular repair, but it can bring down inflammation so that we don't over do it. Another tip would be to stretch after we're already warmed up. I see a lot of runners getting out there and starting to stretch right away on cold muscles. I've never been a fan of this. It never has made sense to me uh, that we go out and actually stretch a cold muscle before we're warmed up. Now, I do think stretching is vital. I think it's really beneficial after we've gone out and actually warmed up, uh, get those, the blood flowing, get those ligaments contracting, the muscles contracting in the body. Then we can go out and do some stretching or even after a run, we want to make sure that we're stretching. But be careful of stretching tight muscles, cold muscles. Um, I do believe that can actually lead to further injury in the muscle and even affect how the tendons are attaching into the bones themselves because the muscles are not ready to be stretched yet. So stretching after we're warm, super crucial. Okay, and even though we're talking about running here, uh, maybe the best thing for you is actually not to go out and start running, but maybe it's just to get some walking in. Um, I think running is sexier than walking to a lot of us, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's more beneficial for us. All the things that we're talking about, the benefits you get from walking, at least with the spine, you can get 
a lot of them from just walking and it's much safer and it's much much healthier. I'm a big proponent of doing shorter distance runs. Now I may be biased because I'm not, I hate running long distances just mentally. It's annoying to me. So maybe I like to support the shorter runs better, but I do think it is backed up physiologically that we should be doing shorter distance running. I'm a big fan of adding, doing shorter runs with walks in between. So uh, you can go out and walk for a mile, run for a mile, walk for a mile, or even adding sprints in where you're maybe running a hundred meters fast and then walk for 500 meters and then running 100 meters fast so not just a jog but an an actual sprint I'm a big fan of adding that type of stuff and it's actually healthier you know really safe for the body I mean don't start your sprint of course you know full speed right away work up to that but it's a good way to warm the body up it's a good way to to get your heart rate up it's a good way to really get those muscles moving in some distance you know some miles inch you're getting a lot of steps without maybe overdoing it so I'm a big fan of adding sprints in rather than long distance running And lastly, always a good idea, a lot of people are not going to like this, but I am a big believer in ending a runoff with an ice bath. Ice baths have been really beneficial for increasing circulation to tissues in the body, helping decrease inflammation, and doing this after a run is very good. If you're a weightlifter, doing an ice bath before you lift is better for muscle building, but for a run, an ice bath afterwards, even a cold shower for, you know, a couple minutes can be beneficial to your body's recovery from that run, making sure that you can keep doing it. So to wrap up, absolutely adding running in, you know, can be a major benefit for your spine. We do want to make sure that we are maximizing the benefits and minimizing the risks with this. So start slow, be careful when you're warming up that you don't have any pre-existing conditions that should limit your running. Make sure that you're getting good shoes, support on your feet when you're running and that you're supporting your body nutritionally. Just make sure that you're maximizing the effort that you're putting in and not hurting yourself. This is Dr. Jeff Algar with Discover Chiropractic. Please don't hesitate to follow us on Facebook on Instagram, on TikTok, subscribe to our YouTube channel, visit our blog on our website, discoverchiropracticmn.com. We post information like this all the time to help you live a healthier life.